Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we are still working on Tobots. As I said, this is going to take a while, and we are continuing with Tobot Zero. This is another one that is kind of up there with Terracle, and one that I had had my eye on for a while, and it's from the slightly older school of Tobots. And who oh boy, there was there was some <laughs> there was some drama. There was some drama entirely the post office's fault not the seller on ebay not their fault at all this was just our mail carrier being our mail carrier which is to say i won't get into it but uh yeah it was not a good time anyway towbot zero is a tow truck and it's this cute sort of squished in little tow truck but works really well the way that the colors are separated are great. You've got like all the blue pretty much back here, all the white up front, which kind of makes sense. You know, you've got the truck cab and then the back could be like a converted bit or something. I'm not entirely sure if tow trucks are built specifically to be tow trucks every time or if truck tow trucks are like trucks that are converted to be tow trucks. But either way, it works. And I like how the sort of standard truck stuff is all white and then the more utilitarian tow truck part of it is this blue and gray and you also get some gray kind of carrying over between the two in the undercarriage there which just kind of makes it all come together it looks good from the back you've got the uh, red tail lights that are actually uh, clear or translucent plastic which is cool it's got his wrench which clips on there there's just a little clippy thing and clips right there and it is his tow key and it is completely pointless as are most tow keys because you just put it in there and twist it and that pops that apart but like you really don't need the key for that so just leave that there but in this case i don't mind it because the tow key has somewhere to go it clips on in truck mode it doesn't look out of place and it can stay there in robot mode and not get in the way so that's totally fine. I still think it's useless, but at least it's got somewhere to go. But yeah, um, you've got the silver for the rims. Unfortunately, just the one side of the crane arm has the rescue printed on it, and the other side is just screw holes and voids of plastic. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of standard with toys. You get the uh, hook back here that can move for what that's worth. It looks like it should be able to swing this way because of this up here, but no, it doesn't. And this can go in and out. And yeah, uh, you got the lights up top. And then of course the sides there and that stupid Tampa graph that I really need to figure out a good way to get rid of. I think it's interesting how they did the uh, door handles in a separate color plastic here. That's not something that they usually do like, usually the door handles are just molded in or painted slightly, but yeah. And then in the front, got the big old box van looking snub nose. And the light blue headlights, I feel like, I don't know, maybe they could have been darker to kind of not show all the stuff behind there, but eh, I don't really, I don't really care. <laughs> it's, the sky blue works. It does. It's, uh... Uh, maybe they could have been yellow, maybe they could have been, like, they could have been in any of multiple colors, but it's fine. It's not something that bothers me, it's just, you know, it's a little light. It kind of might contrast with the white better if it was a bit darker. And you got the grill, you got the unfortunate scuffs, uh, just because of the fact that the figure, um, due to the packaging, not the way it was packaged when it was sent to me, but the actual product packaging, this guy was kind of flopping around in there a little bit, and I think that led to some scuffage here, and I need to try and clean that up. You can see there's a little bit of a paint scratch there in the grill, too, which that bothers me less than the scuffage going around here. But even then, it's not a huge problem. It's a, a Tobot figure. It's a cutified, somewhat simplified, but still detailed real-world vehicle-ish thing. And in a rare twist for me, I actually did put the stickers on this guy. There's the uh, the rescue license plate sticker there, the Kia logo there, this detail for the uh, grill slash whatever, I don't know what this is, I don't know cars, <laughs> but there's that detail there. Uh, there's the caution stripes on the backs up here, and these uh, little rear lights 
behind the uh, the truck cab. In the past with Tobots, with the stickers, I'm not a huge fan because they tend to just kind of get in the way and kind of ruin some of the detail. But here I feel like these stickers actually are intended to be incorporated into the detail and color of the vehicle modes. So this is the one time I put all the stickers on. Every other time I've gotten a Tobot with stickers, it's just been like, no thank you. And in terms of functionality, it's kind of neat that they uh, have this little dynamo thing here, which, uh, see if you can hear this. It makes that little siren type sound, but then if you look up top here, it also makes, makes the lights flash a little bit. And that's interesting. It's kind of pointless. You know, I'm not a huge fan of uh, gimmicks and stuff, but I don't mind the fact that this doesn't really involve batteries. It's just kinetically generated and and that's kind of all you got to do. You don't have to deal with batteries. You don't have to worry about leakage or anything like that. And it's not really intrusive either. It's just kind of right in here and it goes up through here. But like it doesn't get in the way of the robot mode at all, which I definitely appreciate. All right. So before we get to said robot mode, let's do the size comparison thing. And as you would expect, Tobot Zero completely dwarfs a Siege Deluxe. As I said, it's as you'd expect, because, you know, Tobots. And in addition to dwarfing a Siege Deluxe, it also dwarfs the duck tank. All right, that is all of that. So let's do that transformation thing, which, as per usual, with the Tobots and other Korean Transformers, because they're large and simple and there aren't a whole lot of English videos on them, I'm just going to walk through the transformation rather than speed it up. So... Oh, where to start? Let's start with the upper body. So, this is where you would use the tow key to split this, but it's really not necessary. You can just manually do that. So, split it, then bring those down, and rotate. There we go. And these come down. And I just do like a, a click there. And down. Oh, those ratchets are scary. And click. And can pull out the fingers. And this is a thing that I don't really see going over uh, that much in videos, but there's actually a thumb down here that you rotate out. You can leave it out in truck mode. It doesn't actually uh, impede anything. You just have that sticking out. But if you twist it in, it kind of cleans up the back of the truck a little bit better. So... Yeah, didn't even know that joint was there, but it's, it is <laughs> that. And before I pull out the fingers here, I'm actually going to do the head. So I'm going to push in the crane arm and pull this all the way down. And this actually slides up and off. You can see the little uh, slider there. It just goes on like that. So slide that off. And then this will slide in right here. And this is why I didn't put up the fingers, because if the fingers are up, it gets in the way of that mechanism. But then once it's slid into place, you can pull up the fingers and everything's cool. And let's move on to the legs. All right, so here we've got a torso. Now for the legs, just kind of pull these down. That pulls out the entire front of the truck. This will split and hinge around and these will clip into what become the sides of the legs. But first, I'm gonna angle this, there we go. So you can see how that hinges in and clips right there. Clip that in. And all right. Next, I'm gonna straighten out straighten out the knees. Ugh, those ratchets. Scary. All right. And now, that moved on its own, but... Click that out. Click that out. So the way this works, there's this dual hinge system where you kind of... hinge the ankle forward, and then you can kind of angle it out like that. And that's what lets it kind of fit into the... Uh, the truck 
section. So, with that out of the way, you gotta reach in here, pull out this panel, and that will come up, and then clip right over there, lock that in place, and even covers up the enormous gap <laughs> in the torso. So that is that. And lastly, for the head, just rotate it around. You could leave it like this, which gives him kind of like a welder's mask thing, but if you flip it up, it gets a sort of baseball cap look, and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is Tobot Zero in his robot mode. And I completely adore this. I, I really do. Terracle is still probably my favorite standalone Tobot, but Tobot Zero is definitely up there. This guy is really fun. I am a bit worried about the ratchets because some of them feel way too tight. I might need to go in there try to open them up, see if maybe I can get to the ratchets and put some, uh, like, release some of the tension on the springs. I don't know for sure if I will be able to. I don't know how hard it'll be to get everything open, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little scary, some of those joints. It's like one arm is a lot more difficult to bring down than the other, one knee is more difficult to bring down than the other, and it's, yeah, a little concerning, but, you know, it's... It's, hold, it's held up so far. I love the look of this guy. It's so atypical. Not in a Revenge of the Fallen Demolishor kind of way, because that's super atypical. But what I mean is, he's a humanoid robot, but he's a humanoid robot who kind of looks like a cable repairman <laughs> or a, uh, a car mechanic in like stereotypical physical appearance ways. Which is not to say that all cable repairmen or plumbers or mechanics are looking like this. I know that's not true, but this is like a cartoonish, stereotypical representation. And it's not something that I'm very used to seeing in terms of transforming robots, which is why I like it so much. It's different. It stands out to me. It's silly, but not in like a overly goofy way. Like he still looks cool, but he also looks kind of, let's go with jolly. Like, this could basically be me as a robot, given how large of a torso he has. <laughs> but this is fun. I do. I, I really, really like this. And the color is also great in that in the truck mode, all of the color is pretty much just white for the cab, blue for everything else. But here it spreads out so much more and you get little bits of like the fact that like, you know, that this like basically the entirety of the truck is just the top half of his body. The bottom half is you just got these little panels there and that's all you see in the truck mode. But it breaks everything up surprisingly well because you've got the blue on the chest that's more visible now because of the angle. But then you've still got the white for the belly section. Then you've got like white for these bits leading into the shoulders and then the actual shoulders are blue and then white for the biceps, blue for the forearms, blue for the uh, waist section, white for the thighs, blue for the shins and feet, white on the sides there. It's just a really nice staggering of the blue and white color scheme. And it's interesting to me how they managed to pull it off where you've got, you know, the blue and the white pretty much segmented to very specific parts of the vehicle mode, but then they're spread all over the place in robot mode. Despite being such a simple transformation, that comes across really, really well. And starting with the details, he's got some fairly nondescript feet. They work. And I like the uh, orange plastic bits in the knees there. You get a little bit of that in the thigh ratchets as well, which uh, they're not as visible, but it helps to kind of bring everything together. And there's some nice general robotic-y, techno-y plated texture throughout. One thing that kind of bugs me about this guy, which we will see even more when we get to the arms, is they labeled his feet left and right and I I mean I guess they wanted to make it really simple for assembly but I'm not entirely sure why that needed to be on the more visible part of the piece like why couldn't that have been on say the inside or even on the bottom of the foot it just seems strange it's uh not I don't want to call it intrusive 
but it's just a little weird. Uh, and then the torso is the pretty much entire truck cab, which <laughs> it's fun. I like how it's just the main part of the truck is just his entire torso. And it's just this big bulbous thing. In a way, I almost wish that the shape could turn around the other way to give him more of like a pot belly as opposed to a big puffed out chest. But it's it's fine as it is. I just, you know. If I'm going to nitpick, I'm going to nitpick and think that, you know, it would have been kind of cool if you could have turned this around to kind of further emphasize that uh, pudgy mechanic look. And coming to the arms, here you can see again, you've got the right and left. And this distinction makes even less sense to me because the left doesn't have anything here and the right has the Tobot Zero there, and that's embossed. Like, that's not a tampograph. That's straight up, like, that's molded into the plastic. So that didn't need to be like that. But yeah, it's just that the R and L for the arms and or shoulders and feet is just why, especially, like, prominently on the outside. Like, it's, you don't really notice it unless you're looking for it, really, but it's still kind of like, unless you're trying to teach kids right from left, I don't see why this needed to be outside facing front in robot mode. I'm going to stop nitpicking on that now, but it's just kind of the. As for the hands, I think the hands are cool. I like how they're just these big mitts and like you don't get a whole lot of play in the fingers, but it's still neat. It gives them these like big chunky hands with the wheels just kind of in there, but it works. And his fingers splay just well enough that you can actually tell there's like that separation there. And the uh, the groupings of three fingers are actually molded pretty darn well. And I think, too, they uh, do a good job of hiding in truck mode. And he's got his uh, crane, which only goes this way. And you can extend it out if you want. But I uh, don't really care for that. I prefer to have it more compact to the side like that but it's an option i think this is supposed to be some kind of gun or given he's supposed to be like a mechanic or something possibly more likely it's a welding tool of some kind at least that's what i'm gonna think it works and i like that it's got somewhere to go rather than just being put off to the side same deal with the toki which didn't even have to be removed for transformation and just hangs off here it's a little too small for him to be able to hold it all that well like you can kind of close his hand and kind of put it in there sort of and he kind of I guess he kind of holds it but uh it doesn't really like it doesn't clip into his hand or anything like that and before we move on to the head I just want to talk about how amazingly kibble free this guy is like <laughs> it will never stop impressing me how Tobots, for all their simplicity, and in many cases, lack of articulation, they tend to do a really good job with making Kibble not exist with these really simple transformations. Pretty much the only Kibble he has are these bits on the sides of his legs, and they fold up out of the way pretty well. You got some nice detail on the back from that plate that comes up, even on the backs of the shoulders, the backs of the forearms, not so much, but it works really, really well. I mean, you could argue maybe that like these wheels could do something like fold in or push up or whatever, but ugh, who cares? It's that they barely stick off his back. They do not get in the way in the slightest. As for the head, it's kind of a nondescript Tobot head, it's like a very plain faceplate, very plain eye visor, very plain helmet. The only real detail going on here is the uh, orange ear bits, if you want to call them that, and the white hat. But Tobots do a pretty good job of conveying personality, even with simplistic features. I mean, heck, you've got this really simple transformation, really simple truck mode, but then you've got this, like, like I don't know, this bot mode just has personality, even though it's not really swimming in a lot of features. Just that unique shape and motif going here, it's swimming in personality, and the same goes for the head, despite the fact that it's just kind of a blank slate. Like, he's just got this cute little baseball hat thing that can turn into a welder's mask. It's... I really like that. I really like that a lot. There's not a lot to it, but 
this is something really impressive, as I keep saying, to Tobot Designs and how they can do a surprising amount with not a whole lot. In some ways, I feel like Hasbro and Takara could actually learn from Young Toys. All right, that is enough harping on the uh, the looks of Tobot Zero. Let's get to talking about the size of Tobot Zero. And for all his stocky guy proportions, move that back a little bit. For all his stocky proportions, Tobot Zero is still no slouch in terms of size. He's quite big, quite tall, quite bulky. And I really do love how so much of him is tucked inside this cab, but they still manage to close it off and make him look solid. Yeah, he's a big guy, both up and out, just like me. And I'm sure it comes as no surprise, but he also dwarfs the duck tank. And that is that. That is Tobot Zero, a very cool guy. Like I said, probably not my favorite just because I have Terracle. But he is definitely up there. Zero, Terracle, Adventure Z, really all of the Tobots that I have, I really like. I've been very selective in the ones I get, and the ones that I haven't really felt I've put up for uh, for sale. But yeah, I'm very glad I got Zero. Zero is very cool. And I like him more than uh, Tobot V did some re-releases of some figures, including uh, Zero and I like him more than the Tobot V version of Zero because that one is red and white as opposed to blue and white, and I really like this blue and white color combination over the red and white that they did for Tobot V's version. But that is enough about what I think. What do you all think of Tobot Zero? Any of you out there who have Tobots, is this one that you have or had? Is this one that you've been looking forward to getting or trying to find? And are you aware of any transformers or other transforming robot toys that have this kind of like still humanoid shape but less typical uh, proportions where you know say they're a bit larger around the midsection and less standard heroic in terms of their proportions yes i know hound um, aside from movie hound <laughs> can you think of any others because i'm sure there are some out there but i'm not entirely sure what they might be and if you have seen the Tobot V version of Tobot Zero, which is your preference? Because I'm sure there are people out there who prefer that version over this one. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like, subscribe, or if you're feeling generous, no pressure, you can buy me a coffee. There's a link down in the description below for that as well. Again, no pressure. It's just a thing. Thing that you could do if you wanted to. But regardless... Any of those things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.